Hey guys, and welcome to Faith First Designs. I'm Faith, and today we are doing another collaboration with k and Custom Fabrics. We are making a Hobbit hole. They are having a whole Lord of the Rings, like, extravaganza because we were all getting on them. Like, we want Lord of the Rings stuff, so there's a ton of stuff coming out. This is one of the new sew-alongs that's come out. It is the Hobbit hole, and in the very front, you'll see we have little Bilbo's door, and then when you open it up, you can see inside of Bilbo's little house. So cute. It's got a little magnetic snap in there. The inside, we didn't put any zipper pockets or anything like that because we wanted you to be able to see it on the inside and just, it's for funsies, guys. <laughs> but if you wanted a zipper pocket, you can always add that. I wanted to show you some of the hardware because these are so cool. I love the new hardware that's coming out, especially the tree. I'm going to try and put some pictures, insert some pictures for you guys so you can see this bag a little bit better. This isn't the only sew along that's going to be on this round. So make sure that you stay tuned for the outro and I'm going to show you the other sew alongs that are coming out and they're really, really cute and one of them I'm keeping for myself. <laughs> so let's get started. All right, so all of our sew along panels come just like this, rolled up because that's the way you're supposed to do vinyl. Um, if you choose to get vinyl, that's the way it's going to come. They also sell it in other bases, I believe. Don't quote me on that. What you're going to have is you're going to have your outer panel. is going to have your front, your front, your back, your bottom gusset, and your zipper gusset, and then our cute little hobbit door. Um, I'm going to give you all the measurements for everything once I get it all cut out, and I'll show you each piece individually. Uh, you're also going to get your lining. Now, do not cut the lining out as it is. Take your outer panel pieces, that was easy to say, and you're going to use them as a template for your lining. You'll see in just a minute why our uh, lining, for some reason, just prints a little bit larger. I don't know why, but it does. So you're going to take this as a template for your lining. I am going to take this to the ironing board real quick and just kind of iron it out because that's going to be really hard to get an accurate cut like that. You're also going to get your clear window piece so that you can see inside of your little hobbit hole when we open our little door. Okay, so let's talk hardware. So I have two different webbings and I thought that was really cool because it's got the elvish on it. Um, don't ask me which saying it is. I will have to ask Kim and Alex. And then they have this one. I really like this particular one for this bag. So it's probably going to be the one that I use. But I like that one. I thought it was really cool. Okay. Hardware. We're going to need two zippers. So I wanted to show you guys the zippers that we have. So we've got our two different um, zipper, zipper pools. I really like these. Those are really cool looking. Um, you're also, for your strap, you're going to need two swivel clasps and a strap adjuster. I only have one right now because the other one is hiding from me. But you're going to need two for your strap and one strap adjuster. And then you're going to need two D-rings. I just do not have the right color hardware. So we're going we're gonna to do what we got to do. <laughs> you're also going to need these little magnets. They're, they're sew-in magnets. We've used them before on the Alice bag. Um, it's just going to make it nicer because we do have to attach them to the clear piece for your um, front panel. So you're going to need some of those. So that's all the hardware that you're going to need for this bag. Let me go cut out our outer panel and um, show you how to cut out the lining. I've got my lining all ironed out. You can just press it just like you would um, your regular cotton fabric. Um, just don't sit in one spot for too long because it will like kind of shrink up. Um, I just had it on steam and it was fine. I just don't let it like sit there. All right, so your zipper gussets. They are going to be two and a quarter wide by 17 inches long. Your bottom gusset is going to be four and a half wide by 18 inches long. You've got your back and your front panel. Those are going to be 11 inch circumferences. And then you're going to have your door. Your door is going to be seven and a half wide. So from this edge of the door to over here, seven and a half inches wide and then seven inches tall. And then you're going to have your D-ring connectors. Those are going to be two inches by three inches. Now we're going to take our lining and our outer panels and we're going to use them as a template. 
So I'm going to take my outer door to my lining door and I'm going to line those up. And you see how they're like just a smidge bigger than our outside panel? That's why you've got to take your outside panels and use them as a template. So I am just going to cut around here. All right, now take your outer pieces and do the same thing to the rest of the panel or the rest of your lining panel. All right, so when you're cutting everything out, your front panel and your lining that goes with your front panel, let's save those for a minute. Don't, don't cut this out yet. I don't want you to cut it out like it is and then find out that the white's not matching with the front panel. So just set that aside for a second. We're going to grab our outer and lining zipper gussets. So you're going to have two outers, two linings. You guys know the drill by now. We are going to put our zipper gusset right side to the right side of our outer piece. And we're going to clip those together all the way down. Take one of your lining, put it right side to the wrong side of your zipper. All right, then we're going to sew these together. But real quick, we're going to grab our back panel and our back lining, and we're going to put those wrong side to wrong side. So it'll look like that. I'm going to go ahead, while I'm at the sewing machine, instead of taking you back and forth and back and forth, I'm going to go ahead and do this. So that's one less trip back to the sewing machine and back to the table. So you're going to have wrong side to wrong side. All right, so let's take these two to the sewing machine. All right, so I have got my stitch length at a three. I have a size 12 needle in. Uh, my machine is a Sailrite fabricator. And... All right, so we're going to sew at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, making sure to backstitch. Now I'm going to switch my stitch length to a four, and I am going to take my outer and my lining and pull them away from my zipper so that they're like, hopefully you can see that, they're away from my zipper, and I'm going to line up these outer edges and base stitch them together so that it's much easier when we go to put the zipper gusset on later on. So four stitch length, I'm sewing an eighth of an inch on the edge. So your zipper gusset should look like this. Now, while we're still at the sewing machine, we're going to grab our front and lining that we put wrong sides together, and we're just going to base stitch around the edges wet at a one eighth of an inch and using a four stitch length. All right, we have got our back panel connected to our lining panel. We're going to set that aside. Now we're going to finish our zipper gusset. So we're going to get our outer zipper gusset panel. We're going to put it right side to the right side of our zipper gusset. And then I'm just going to clip them together all the way down. Take your lining fabric right side to the wrong side of your zipper. And add that to the clips. We're going to take this to the sewing machine and do just like we did. We're going to sew it with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then we're going to take the sides and top stitch everything down. So let's go to the sewing machine, sew at a quarter of an inch. Alright, so I have changed my stitch length back to a three. A quarter of an inch, we're going to sew that zipper gusset on. Now we're going to take our outer panel and our lining panel and pull them away from our zipper just like we did a minute ago. And I'm going to change my stitch length to a four. All right, so our zipper gusset is done. And before you go any further, let's get those zipper pulls on <laughs> before we forget. All right, so I'm separating my zipper tape. I have got my zipper and I'm going to put the left side in first. Then I'm going to put the right side in and I'm going to push it down. And you see how the right side is sticking up just a little bit more than the left side? 
we didn't quite do it right. You want them to be even when you push them down like that. So as long as they're even like that, you've done it right. And go down to the other end and open it up. And then we're going to take this zipper pull, left side on first, right side on next. And the one thing that I really, really like about Kim and Alex's zipper pulls is they seem to go on so much faster and so much easier than all of my other zipper pulls. And I don't know why, but they do. And it's really nice. <laughs> okay. Our zippers are on. Now we need to go, before we add our bottom gusset to our zipper gusset, we need to make our D, our D ring connectors. So I have got my D ring connectors. I put a piece that is three quarters by three ish inches long um, of Decoville light on the back of mine. We're going to make a center mark down both of them and then I'm going to grab some double sided tape. Half an inch is kind of overkill but that's all I have in stock right now. <laughs> so That's what we're using. All right now we're going to take that paper off and make each side fold into the center just like that and then we're going to take it to the sewing machine and sew at a quarter of an inch down this side pivot and then back down this side we're going to do that to both of our d-ring connectors all right i've got my stitch length at a four and i'm just going to go down a little over a quarter of an inch make about two stitches and then back down. All right, let's go back to the desk and add our D-rings. All right, so we've got our bottom gusset, our two D-ring connectors, and our two D-rings. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my D-ring and slide it onto the side where we folded our sides into, and then I'm going to put it in the center and then fold this over. Then I'm going to take it and find the center of the short side of my gusset and then I'm just going to clip that in place and I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. So on the side where it's folded in, fold it in half, find the center and clip it in place. Now when I get to my sewing machine, I think I'm going to pull my D-rings up just about just about a quarter of an inch like that just to give it some extra stability but it's a little, it's too much of a pain to do it right here so let's go to the sewing machine and I'll show you what I do all right so I still have my stitch length at a four and I'm just gonna pull that up about a quarter of an inch or so making sure I'm still in the center and I am just going to go real slow because she's thick I'm just going to sew right across there and base stitch that in place. Um, I base stitched at an eighth of an inch from the edge, not an eighth of an inch from the D ring connector. So hopefully you can see there's, here's the edge right here and just sewed an eighth of an inch. I'm going to do that to the other side as well. All right. So we have got our D rings connected on each side. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our lining of our bottom gusset and our zipper gusset. We're going to put right sides together so the right side of our zipper gusset to the right side of our bottom gusset and I like to just clip those together so they don't move on me. Now I'm going to grab my lining fabric and put it right side to the right side of my lining, wrong side of my zipper. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch across there. But while we're here, let's go ahead and connect the other side as well. Get your D-ring out of the way. Put right side to right side. And then clip them together. And then take the right side of your lining to the right side of your lining, wrong side of your zipper. If that makes any sense whatsoever. We're also going to sew a quarter of an inch down this side. So you'll have seams on both these sides connecting your zipper gusset and your bottom gusset. So let's go do that. All right. 
So at a quarter of an inch, we're just going to sew, making sure to back stitch. All right, now I'm gonna to go to the other end and I'm gonna start sewing it together. All right, now that we've got these edges together, we need to take the outside and turn it right side out. Next thing that I like to do is I like to take my bottom gusset and my landing gusset and clip on each side, connecting my outer and my lining fabric. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to baste at an eighth of an inch on the sides just so that my lining and my outer panel stay together. So once you have this all clipped up, we're going to go back to the sewing machine and just like we did on the zipper gusset, we're going to base stitch down the side. All right, I have got my stitch length at a four. I'm just going to start right there on the corner. I'm just base stitching along the sides an eighth of an inch from the end. Now, if you want, you can come down and then go across your D ring, but it's so thick there um, that sometimes if you're on a domestic or if you're on an industrial, an industrial should be able to handle it. Um, but if your machine won't go over that, there are no rules that say that you have to do that. So if you don't want to go over the D ring connector, you don't have to go over the D ring connector. You do you. It looks fine without it. All right, so we have got our gusset as in one piece. Next thing that I did was I took my sides and I put them together and then I made a little snip right in the center. I did that on both sides of my zipper gusset and then I did the same thing. I put my sides together, found the center, and cut center marks on the center bottom of my gusset. Then I took my back panel and I folded it in half, found the center, made a mark, found the center, made a mark, put those marks together, found the center, found the center. So now I have four marks to match up my gusset. We're going to take our gusset and turn it uh, right sides in. And what you're going to need to do, it doesn't matter on your back panel which side is up. It is completely and utterly up to you. But I am going to find my I'm going to find a center mark and match it up with the top of my zipper gusset then I'm gonna find my bottom marks and clip those together and then my side is going to line up with my side seam here and then my other side mark should meet up right there and then go ahead and clip all the way around Use as many clips as you need. All right, now we're going to take this to the sewing machine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it like this and just kind of push the sides down as I sew all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and sew it at a quarter of an inch just to kind of get everything in place and then we will take some binding and go ahead and bind it up. All right, I have got my stitch length at a four and then like I said, we're just gonna do a quarter of an inch all the way around, all the way around. You may have to move it around a little bit. It is a round shape. You know how much we love the round things. <laughs> just take your time doing this. All right, so we are all attached. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab something to bind this with. I cut my waterproof canvas at one inch by the length of my waterproof canvas. Um, if you're worried about it fraying, you can always take a lighter and go down each side of the edges and you'll be fine. Um, you could use fold over elastic. Um, that has actually worked really nice, but all I have is black and I feel like it would stick out like a sore thumb and not look good. So I'm gonna take this and on my end, I'm gonna press that one inch in half and then cut at a diagonal like that. 
sirens going off. <sighs> you know, it never fails when you decide to make a video that, I don't know, the fire truck's got to go out for the day. <laughs> All right. We're going to take our binding. We're going to fold this tip down. And then we're going to fold that in half. It just kind of helps get that bulk out of the top of that seam. All right. Now, I like to start where my zipper is because it's going to be kind of hidden um, so that when you turn it inside out, if you've got your seam right here, you're not going to see it. If you've got it towards the bottom, then you're probably most likely going to see it. So I just like to put my seams starting and ending on the very top. So hopefully it won't be too much of an eyesore. So I am just going to clip all the way around and then we'll take it to the sewing machine and then sew again at a quarter of an inch. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our front channel and I've got my X-Acto knife because I feel like I have better control of what I'm doing. You can take scissors, you can cut it out, whatever you want to do. The important thing is that you get it as smooth as you can. You know how when you open your scissors and close your scissors and then you move and you open your scissors and close your scissors, sometimes there's like a little jagged edge. We don't want that. We want to keep it as straight as physically possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to slightly turn this as I'm cutting it so that I don't have to have that jagged start and stop. But I feel like I didn't start far enough away from me. So we may have a little jaggedy jaggedy. And I'm probably going off screen now. Sorry. I'm trying so hard. I'm running out of desk. Okay. How far are we? Oh, I didn't quite make it. Okay. Start back up here. Slightly turning it as I'm cutting. There we go. Okay. I have a little jiggly there, but that is okay. I can deal with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our clear piece. We're going to grab some double-sided tape. And just add some double sided tape pieces right there. We're going to take our clear panel that you have. If your panel is kind of like rolled up tightly and you want it to kind of lay flat, all you need to do is take your iron and just um, put a pressing cloth over it and just for like a second. Don't put it on there with steam, nothing like that. Just for a second and it will lay flat um, so that you can work with it and do what you need to do. Now I'm going to take the double sided tape off or the paper off the double sided tape. Well, let's get that straight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to center this so you've got the door and you want not yet you want to get it nice and centered hand so that it's not sideways so just like that and just get it as straight as you can I know I know there's no like registration marks to kind of line it up or anything but just do the best that you can next we're gonna grab our lining fabric what we're gonna need to do is take it like this so that the right side of the lining fabric is facing up we're gonna put this panel down and I'm gonna center it and then I'm just going to put my little weight on there and then I'm going to cut around it. And I'm also looking to make sure the white, the white center here is in the white center here. So it's not like that where you can kind of see the print off to the side, but it's in the center as best as I can get it. Okay. And then go ahead and cut that excess um, lining off. Now that that's done, what we're going to need to do 
I take this with the wrong side facing us and go ahead and trim all of this down if you'd like. I left it all on there just so it's a little easier to place it and then you can just cut off the excess later. All right. So now, wrong side to wrong side, we're going to add our wall because this is what you're going to see when you're looking on the inside of the bag. We're going to clip those together and I'm going to sew with the right side up. So the outside panel facing up because I need that to look nice. What we're going to do is we're going to go around an eighth of an inch around the inside and then I'm going to go ahead and sew an eighth of an inch on the outside. So both of those will get sewn down. All right, so I'm going to do the inside one and I am just using my uh, foot here as a guide and I'm just going to try and stay on the edge. I have got my stitch length at a four. And just go slow because it is round and we all know how much we all love round stuff. It's not hard at all. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the outside an eighth of an inch all the way around. All right, now that you've got this in place, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to get a really sharp um, seam ripper. What you're gonna need to do is just pick a few stitches. We do not want to go through the clear vinyl. So you're gonna have to just pick a few stitches out and get your seam ripper underneath and in between those two layers, between your lining layer and your clear vinyl layer. Just try really hard not to poke your clear vinyl. Okay, I'm in and you can't see because it's right there, but I'm in between those two layers and I'm taking my seam ripper and letting it do all the work for me. I'm trying to get as close to these stitches as I can so that it won't be showing in the front. Let me get a little bit more done and then I'll show you. Okay, so you see how the clear panel is right there. I'm just getting as close as I can to the stitches we just did. And I'm just kind of gliding my seam ripper right along. Alright, so that's all out. The only point where it really matters is right here where there's no artwork. You need to make sure that that lining piece, um, I don't know if you can see where my finger is, but there's a little bit of lining showing through. I need to cut that back just a little bit more. And I've got my sharp scissors. And then I can cut that back. Now, so that this won't like unravel and look bad in the future, I'm going to take my lighter. And I'm going to very carefully, just barely, kiss that waterproof canvas so that the edges are melted and you don't have to worry about this fraying over time. And you just, you have to be really careful because if you t put too much heat on the uh, clear vinyl, you could melt the clear vinyl. So you're just giving it a little so that it won't unravel later on. You don't want to stay in one place too long. All right. Because you do not want to melt that. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. All right. All right. So now we have got our outer door, our lining door, and our magnetic um, snaps. First thing you're going to do is take your lining and then fold it in half. And just kind of put a little tiny crease right there and then I'm gonna fold it over and I measured up one inch and made a mark right in the center I'm gonna take one of my magnetic snaps 
And what you're going to do, on your magnetic snaps, you're going to have one side that has a magnet like inside the case. You can kind of see a ring around it. That's the side that you want right side to the wrong side of your lining. So like that. So you're going to see this side when you're sewing. This side right here should be face down. So we're going to put that right on that dot right there. And then I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch around that magnet so that it sews it in place. All right, so I have changed my bottom thread out so that it'll match the door a little bit better and won't be so like stark different. I have got my magnetic snap right on that dot and then kind of an eighth of an inch all the way around. I have got a four stitch length. I'm just going to go around and sew that in place. All right, so we have got our magnetic snap sewn onto our door lining. Next thing we're going to do is take our outer panel and our lining panel and put them right sides together. So right sides together. And then I'm just going to make a few clips. All right, so we're going to start up here making sure that we back stitch. So I'm going to go up a couple of stitches and then back a couple of stitches and then start going all the way around. Same thing, go all the way up, back up. This part right here along the straight edge needs to remain open so that we can turn this inside out. I've got my stitch length at a three. And I'm just doing a couple of stitches. And then I'm going to go back because I want that to be pretty secure. All right, so our magnet is sewed on, ready to go. Next thing you're gonna need is a sharp pair of scissors. And right there where it kind of goes straight and then curves, you're gonna need to make a little notch like you would like a zipper pocket, just so that when that turns, it'll lay nice and flat. Make sure that you're not cutting your threads because then you're going to have to sew it again. All right, so just like that. I am burning through batteries today. Okay. <laughs> now, turn this inside out. And then what you need to do is you need to make sure that all of the edges are pushed out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the sewing machine and just top stitch all the way around. Alright, so we've got this all turned inside out. Here's what we need to do. Where this kind of goes in and then starts rounding out, I want to start top stitching right there at that black where the door hinge starts. Start top stitching all the way around and back up to the other side and stop. When we get done with that, we're going to fold this in both the lining and the outer fabrics and then when we've got that closed we're going to take it to the main panel and then continue our stitch to sew it onto the main panel. I just want to explain what we're doing before we do it. <laughs> that way you guys be like you didn't finish it. Nope. No I didn't. Alright so my stitch length is at a four and I'm going to be real careful when I get close to that um, sewn-in magnet and just kind of feel with my hands, it should be plenty clear. Yeah, it's going to be plenty clear. I'm just going to be real careful because that size 12 needle will go flying. So it should look like that and then I'm going to pull my threads to the back, um, clip them and then burn them and then we'll get to the next step. All right, so that's all done. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this about a quarter of an inch and push it down. I am going to clip one side down and then I'm going to go to the other side, making sure that your seams are kind of going to one side or the other. I want that, as, that seam as flat as we can get it. It'll just be easier to sew over later. So I'm going to push that seam to one side and then push it down. So we've got it like that, that one edge in. All right, so that's done. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta grab our door. 
Now this is going to be kind of one of those things you're going to have to look at it and figure out where it goes. And I know, I'm so sorry. So sorry. All right. So you're going to want to center your door so that you see where we stopped our stitches and our top stitching and then the kind of door bracket starts. You're going to want to have that right here where the door bracket starts on the artwork. So let's see. And I'm going to make this face me for just a minute. And you're going to have a little bit of this peeking out on the top, bottom, and sides. When you're happy with where that's at, we're going to go to the sewing machine. And I think what I need to do is take, if you've got the key fob pliers, you could take them and pinch them down right here just so that it's a little bit thinner to be able to sew over. But anyway, now I've got to get it back to where it was. Okay, you're going to start where you stopped your top stitching. Start there. That's one or two stitches right here. Go over and then back down. And that will attach our door. And then we can finally put the magnet on the other side. This is the tool that I was just talking about, the key fob. It's got the rubber on it so that you can take it and kind of squish your vinyl down so that it's not as thick. It'll kind of, anytime you have like thick bumps to go over, you can just take it, squeeze it a little bit, and then it just kind of like smashes it out so that you're not going over like a bulk. So, okay. I have got my piece right where I want it. I've lined up like the um, black artwork right here where there's a line that's going straight across. I've got it all lined up together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go over this really slowly because I have a size 12 needle in there right now. And she don't like thick things, but... Okay. Now one or two stitches forward. I have a four stitch length so that it looks like it's just continuous. Okay. It should look like that. And then when we open it up, it'll be nice and attached. We won't see any seams or anything in here, but it'll be nice and attached. All right. Let me take care of these threads and then I'll show you how we put the other magnetic snap on the inside. All right. So we have got our door sewn on. Super cute when you open it up and peek in, right? Okay. Now, we have to add our other magnet, and it is on, the magnets are going to be meeting from the flap to clear material, or on the clear vinyl, so I don't want to sew it on, because I'm afraid that it'll look weird, and it kind of takes away from the artwork. So, what we're going to do, and this is normally not something I would do, however, we are where we are. <laughs> um, I'm going to take this other sew-in magnet. I'm going to let it fall where it's supposed to, because that's where it went. This isn't something that's structural. If it was something that was holding a purse together, I'd be like, sew it in. This is just for funsies, um, for the door to open and close, so we can be like, isn't that cute? So it's not a big deal. So what I'm going to do is I've got some um, Gorilla Glue, uh, Super Glue. This, this pains my heart. <laughs> To do this but this is what we're going to have to do guys it just is what it is if you don't want to sew this in then it's just what we got to do now i've got the magnet right where i want it what i'm going to do is lift up the corners i hate using super glue i always get it all over me whenever i use it and it's so annoying all right so i'm just going to put a little bit on each corner and hold it down for a few seconds 
And the good thing is you won't, if you get a little excess on either of the sides, it's not like it's going to show. It's just going to be on the artwork so you won't be able to see it. And I'm trying to be patient. <laughs> it's so hard. So I want to give it a couple of seconds to dry before I move on to the next one. Okay, so you're going to want to do that to all four corners. All right, I am gonna let this sit and let it dry for a little while, um, just because I don't wanna be adding this to my bag and then having that pop off on the inside and having to try and re-glue it back together, that would just be a pain in the butt. So I am just gonna let that do its thing and let it dry, and I don't think I got any super glue on me at this time. It's a miracle. All right, let's go wait patiently, and then we will finish the bag. All you need to do is do the same thing that we did to the bottom. Make your center marks at the top and the bottom. Make your center marks on each side, and then match them up to your gusset. So, we'll just wait patiently. All right, so I let this dry um, overnight. I just went ahead and stopped for the day, just because I didn't want to have to keep folding this in half and trying to find the centers and all of that and take a chance on messing this up. So I just left it for that day and it was good. And we are good to go. It is nice and stuck in place. Next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to find the center of the top and the bottom. You just fold it in half, clip, clip, and then fold this in half the other direction so that you can find the sides center. So now you have your two side centers and your top and your bottom center. We're going to grab our bag. We've already got our marks ready to go. So we're going to put right side to right side. I'm going to match up the bottom and then the top and then the sides and then I'm just going to clip all the way around. All right, so we're all clipped up, and if you hear Taylor Swift belting downstairs, that's my daughter. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm like, I need to record, but you're going to hear Taylor Swift, so hopefully I don't get demonetized or something. Okay, we have got our stitch legs at a four, and we're just going to go all the way around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. All right, that is all sewn together. Next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna grab our other um, piece of binding and then we'll just go all the way around. All right, so we've still got a four stitch length and we're just gonna go around and sew our binding on. And then all you have to do is turn it inside out and make the strap. All right, so we're all done. We've got both sides um, bound. Now we're gonna open it up. And we're gonna be really careful because of that clear um, vinyl. I don't think it's gonna like, you know how when you fold clear vinyl and it just kind of gets squished for a minute, it kind of is permanently there. I don't think that's gonna happen because I've got a nice wide open here, but you never know. So I'm just gonna be careful and try and work my way up from the bottom to getting this turned inside out. All right, so she's all turned inside out. The clear vinyl is fine. Um, I just did from the bottom and then kind of got the back out first and then worked the um, front out. But look at the zipper pulls. Hopefully you can see all of that. It's such a cute purse. It's so cute. It's simple, but it's really, really cute. And I really like this part of it. Okay strap hit it so we've got 60 inches of webbing a strap adjuster and then two swivel clasps for our purse first thing we're going to do is we're going to burn both ends of our webbing so that it doesn't uh, fray off then we're going to put 
our webbing through one side of our strap adjuster and back down the other just like that and then I'm going to clip this in place for now so it'll look like that then with the side that's been flipped over we're going to go all the way down and we're going to get one of our swivel clasps I'm going to put it on just like that then I'm going to take this end and put it back through the swivel clasp on the side that has um, the end on it. I'm going to put it back through that side and then back down again. And it should look like that. Grab your other swivel clasp. That one's going to be on the front this time. And then we're going to fold it over. You guys can do this one inch, one and a half inch, um, whatever, however much you need folded over, whatever your machine can get to. Um, that's about like, what? Not quite one and one and a quarter over. It's just up to you, however much you want to fold over. All right, let's go to the sewing machine and sew that up. All right, I've got my stitch length out of three. And then all I'm going to do is make a little box. That's it nothing fancy it's one inch webbing so i normally just do a, a little square if i was doing one and a half then i would probably do the square with the x in it but i don't this bag isn't super heavy so i don't think that it needs it All right, so as you can see, little square, I'm going to pull all the threads through when I get done. Now I'm going to grab this side and do the same thing, just a little square and call it done. All right, guys, so what did you think? A nice, quick sew. Um, I, at least that's what I thought after I've done the last couple of sew-alongs. It was a nice, quick sew. So hopefully you thought that too. I hope you guys like the little door. Because it's just, I think it's adorable. And I think these are going to sell really well, I hope. Fingers crossed. Now, this is just one of the sewing longs that's going to be in the round. Let me show you the others. So we have got the Lord of the Rings book book. So if you bought the Winchester purse, this is going to be a reuse of the Winchester. Um, basically the same design. I did this one just a little bit differently and put a slip pocket in it because this is the one that I am taking for my own. <laughs> Um, but I just wanted to show you guys kind of what it looked like. I feel like I need a collection of these and just have them like the Winchester and all of them just kind of lined up <laughs> so that I can have the collection of our books. Um, the inside is just some writing down on the front and then there is, let's see, there is a slip pocket on the inside of that. I added that myself. The pattern um, does not have one. I had to double check. This one does not come with a zipper pocket, but you could add one. Since this one I am keeping for myself, I went ahead and I added the uh, zipper for the inside. But I really like how the artwork turned out on this one. And that's not all. We have one more. It's There and Back Again by Bilbo Baggins. And this one's really cute too. This is a reuse of the Star Wars bag, if you've seen that one. Um, really easy, quick, super quick bag. Like I got this done in less than an hour. Um, cutting and interfacing and all of that stuff. Um, I didn't do tutorials on all of these just because you've already got them and it didn't make a whole lot of sense to take the time to make another one. So just watch the Star Wars bag and then the other one watch Editing Faith. We'll put a picture of the video you need to watch for this one. <laughs> and then this one is the Star Wars one. So we don't have anything on the sides or the back. I added a magnet that I just happen to have um, on the back just to kind of dress it up a little bit but if you want there and back again they've got you covered and this is what I mean when I say like I need to have all of these guys like lined up on a shelf somewhere what's that you want to see the shirt I'm wearing well of course you can I want you guys to check out all of the links below because it's not just k &A stuff that I'm kind of pushing here this year I have started a website for all of my new patterns that are coming out one of them is behind me, um, and I will post a picture of it here. The next thing that I did this year was I made t-shirts. And so this is one of the ones that I made, 
and I'll put a better picture of it here. T-shirts have been an idea that was in the works for forever. I was just waiting till 10,000 subscribers before I was going to do it and I got impatient so I went ahead and launched it anyway. Make sure that you check the links down below. There are more t-shirts that I will hopefully be putting pictures up now so that you guys can kind of see what all I've put up there. It really does help support the channel and help me be able to do what I do. Um, pattern makers don't get paid a lot. So <laughs> um, every like pattern that I sell, every panel that I sell, every t-shirt that I sell kind of helps keep my business going. So I really appreciate the supports you guys can give me by purchasing one or all of those things would really be appreciated. Make sure that if you like this video, you give it a thumbs up or if you want to subscribe and hang around and see some of the other sew alongs that are coming up this year. If you've used any of the panels that have come out within the past year, we're going to be reusing those just to kind of give us an easy year. It's been a busy, busy year for all of us. Kim and Alex have been super busy with all of their boxes that have been dropping on their walls. So if you haven't seen those, make sure you go check those out. I have been busy building my business back up. We've all just been busy. So we are going to be using, reusing some of the ones that we've already uh, made, but we will have some new ones hopefully at the end of the year, especially for the Harry Potter round. I'm really excited about that one because it is a cute little bag. But anyway, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section down below. And please do me a favor and check out all the links down below. I would love for you guys to give me your feedback on my t-shirts. Tell me if you like them or not. Um, the website too. I am, I'm not the best at decorating and doing things like that. And I used uh, Squarespace to be able to kind of put everything together. And I feel like the pictures are huge, but I don't know what to do to make them smaller. So we're stuck with what we have. <laughs> so let me know. Go check out those links and let me know. Thanks for joining us again on FaithWorks Designs. Bye guys.